Hello, I'm Matuba George, and I bless God for this new week and what God is about to do in your life. Praise God. Now, today, we, we are beginning a new topic. We're going to be looking at our faith in the Lord. Another way to look at it is how to live the Christian life. How do we live this thing? So sometimes when we talk about these things, it's, it's, uh, it's vague to a lot of people. They don't, they don't understand. They just think, okay, I'm born again. What next? Go to church. Okay, I'm going to church. What next? Join a department. Okay, I've joined a department. What next? Um, do what we are doing. Go for soul winning. Give. And, and then what next? A lot of people don't understand what we are involved with. And you see, because of that, they, they get stuck in life. Now, as a minister, I've seen, you know, being, being in this for many years now, I've seen lots of people who are stuck. And they are not stuck because God is dead or God is not alive. They are stuck because they don't even understand what they are doing. When you're going on a journey, you will get stuck if you don't know exactly where you're going to. At least if you know where you're going to, you can ask questions. Oh, wait, sorry, I'm, I'm headed for so-and-so place. Which direction do I take from here? But when you don't know where you're going, and then you're moving, and then you get to a junction, you don't know which way to turn. And then someone wants to help you, you don't even know what to tell the person. So where are you going to? Um, I'm, just, I'm just traveling. To where? The Bible says God has not called us to seek him in vain. That's a very powerful statement. He's not called us to seek him in vain. That's why Paul prayed in Ephesians. He says that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened, that you will know what is the hope of your calling. There is such a thing as the hope of your calling. In other words, there is a reason God called you to be saved. There is a reason God called you to do what you're doing. There is a reason. If you don't know that reason, then you will know your destination. You don't even know where you're going to. And this is why a lot of people are stuck in their lives. People who were, you know what we say, on fire in their youth. And now they're just following the motions. You sit down with them and, and, and hear them speak. You are not encouraged concerning the gospel. Now, these are the things we're going to be looking at. And by the grace of God, I, 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 I just want to be a blessing to you by the Spirit of God. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our hearts are open to learn from you, Lord. You are truth, and there is no shadow of turning with you. Thank you, because you are opening our eyes and our understanding to your truth. And Lord, you will not hold back anything that is profitable to us. But you will abundantly supply your grace, your mercy, and favor in your truth that we will grow in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the most important thing. Thank you, precious Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Now, first of all, let's turn your Bibles, turn your Bibles with me to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. And I'm reading from verse 6. Now he says, we all know the scripture. If you don't know the scripture, then even if you're not born again, you must have heard the scripture. Praise God. If you don't know it, then you've been far away from the Christian community. Praise God. Now it says, but without faith, it is impossible. Note that word. Impossible to please God. To please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently 
seek him. Now, I want you to get something from here. This is Paul speaking. I believe that Paul, Apostle Paul, wrote the book of Hebrews. Now, <clears throat> he says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Then he says, for, he used the word for, that's because. That was, this is the reason I said what I said, what I just said now. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So you want to ask how? He says, because anyone who comes to God must believe that he is. That's number one. Number two, you must believe that he rewards those who diligently seek him. Now, how does this, how does this come together in our walk with God? How does this come together in the way we live our lives? Now, people don't understand this. First of all, there's a difference between faith and belief. Sometimes people mix them up. So you don't know when you're walking in faith and you don't know when you're just believing. See, Believing is awesome. You must believe before you get to the realm of faith. But they are not the same thing. If you don't believe, you may have it so difficult to get to the area of faith. And then you need faith to see result of your believing. Now, these are the things I'm going to be explaining to you. So, and I'm going to be using practical situations. So, we're not just talking of something in the clouds. We're talking of something you deal with on a daily basis. Like I said, I just want to help you. Praise God. Now, what's the difference between belief and faith? He said here that anyone who comes to God must believe that God is. Now, when he says... You must believe that God is what he's saying. You see, if you don't believe that there is God, for example, why do you come to him in the first place? Secondly, when you come to God, what are you expecting? Now, every information we get about God, like the Bible, for example, and, and testimonies of people, all those things are to help our belief. Because this is the truth. You believe things based on available facts. Now, it's important you understand what facts that you are yielding your mind to. If your facts are not based on truth, you're going to have a problem. Now, this is where it, it's very important you, you know what you pay attention to. For example... If you pay attention to the news all the time, you're just, you just we are waiting for the, for the 9 o'clock news or the 10 o'clock news every day. That's what you're just, what are they going to say? What, what are they going to say? Now, if that's what you pay attention to, those will become your facts. And because those will become your facts, your believing is going to be affected by those facts. Now, why do I say fact? Yes, because you'll be able to tell that, oh, so so thing happened, so so thing happened to so so and so person, so so thing happened in, an, in, in, in that, that particular area. Okay. Let me give an example. You want to travel, for example. Let's say you want to travel by air. And you decide before you travel, maybe it's your first time of flying. And then you decide before you travel, you just want to go on, on the internet or on YouTube to watch every air, um, every plane crash that, has, that is available or every plane accident that is available. And you spend time watching that. I bet you it will get to a point you tell, you know what, man, I'm not flying. I think I will go through another means. Why? Because you subjected your mind to available facts now those things you're watching happened those are facts but the fact that the the the, the, the when i say they are facts it doesn't mean they are based on truth now listen also you can decide okay you know what i want to watch every testimony about plane crash that people survived or, or near misses or, or something. I want to watch 
things that show that um, God saved people. Now, there are, those are also available. And you watch and watch and watch and watch. And what happens? Your believing is going to be influenced by those facts also. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, now he says, anyone who comes to God must believe that he is. He is what? Whatever you're going to believe is going to be influenced by the facts that you have exposed yourself to. Now, that's why we always say this. Listen, expose yourself more to the word of God. Expose yourself. See, that's why the Bible says, don't forsake the assembly together of the saints. Now, why, why did he say that? He didn't say that because... You know, you know, people have all this, all, all kinds of mentality. I stay around the, the church or stay around God's people. Or why? So that in case anything happens, ah, there will be somebody there. No, the, the truth is this. The reason he says don't forsake the assembly of the saints is because of the testimony amongst the saints. You need to understand what I'm sharing with you. When you're around God's people, your facts will be different from being hanging around people of the world. Now, this is just true. When you're around faith people, when you're around people who love God, when you're around people who are, who are active in their work with God, your facts are going to be ex ex influenced, your believing is going to be influenced by their facts. Now, I'm using the word fact deliberately. Because I'm putting it on a balance. And then we'll go to the realm of truth. Now, Jesus made a powerful statement. He says, I am the way. I am the truth. And then he says, I am the life. Now, I want to take that truth. When he says, I am the truth, what does it mean? Anything that is coming from me. Well, let me use this word. Any fact that you are taking from me is based on truth. So, when you hang around God's people, then you hear their testimony. You have to be sure. I didn't say hang around people who go to church. I'm saying hang around people who you know are God's people. People who you know have an active faith walking with God. Praise God. You, you can have... You can have, you can subscribe to, to, to something, but you're, you're not active. You know what I mean by that? You, you haven't renewed your subscription. So, do you subscribe to, to a channel or do you subscribe to a program or something? But if you have not, um, um, what's it called now, renewed your subscription, you will not be active. Though you're connected, but you can use it. So there are people like that, that they, they, they are born again. They, they, they've, they've been walking in faith, but right now they are not actively walking in faith. Now, the only reason you should be around such people is to motivate them. Because if you don't motivate them, they are going to lure you out of faith. Because they are, they, these are the kind of people you will hear complaining about every other person. Because their minds are dwelling more. Why are they not active? There must be a reason they are not active. And most times it is as a reason of some certain failure somewhere. So someone, there are people who are angry with God and they don't even know that they are angry with God. That there are people like that. But when you hear them speak, you will hear it in their sound. You will hear it in what they say. Not, not that they will tell you, I'm angry with God. But, but you, you sit around them and then you begin to wonder, is this person really happy with God? If you can listen. So now he says, anyone who comes to God must first believe that God is. Very powerful. So before you approach God, let's say in prayer, whatever you're doing. Before you take God's facts, you must first of all believe that, hey, you see, one time Jesus met this man, and, and, and a blind man, and then Jesus asked him, do you believe that I can do this for you? There's a reason Jesus said that to him. 
do you believe that I can do this for you? Where is he going to believe from? The available fact by the things he has heard of him. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Listen, I, I pray that as we go into this, that your faith will be stirred. And that you, maybe you're, you're going weak. You'll be active again. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. I bless your day today. May the Lord go ahead of you today and make every crooked path straight. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.